Everyone, it's Ross, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about some dried figs, how to accomplish this, what are you know, some of the advantages and, and disadvantages, and I want to compare them here to a store-bought brand that uh, you can pick up at Costco that's actually really good. Um, as far as dried figs go, I'm really impressed by them. Uh, normally, I don't prefer dried figs over fresh figs, but uh, if you get them right, you really dry them well, and you get the right varieties, and you you ripen the figs well, so that's the other key, is that it's not enough to just take an underripe fig, uh, a poorly grown fig, a fig that has poor flavor, and then dry it. That's one misconception. If you dry it, you're like, oh, well, maybe it'll be good if you dry that. Well, the answer is no. It has to be really good to start. It's like anything with our jams, our sauces, getting the best foot forward into the product is going to net us the best result. Um, now some of these will dry on the tree, but not to this extent. You know, some of them will shrivel up here, especially you can see it at the neck, but it's not enough to be like, oh, well, that's a dried fig. And that's, you know, technically what people would consider dried figs. And all I do really is just put them in the dehydrator here and I plug it in. I don't even know what temperature this is. I think it runs, you know, this is a Nesco. I think it runs somewhere on like 110, 115, maybe as high as 130. And I do this for maybe about four to six hours. And I would quarter them, you know. If you have a smaller fig like this, you just cut it in half. If you have a larger fig, you can quarter them, and then they come out real nice like this. So I want to try some for you, and just do a little bit of a, of a comparison here. They are really quite good and chewy. This is a Cavalieri that I dried. This one's incredible. And this fig has a really interesting cherry flavor to it, and when you dry it, that cherry flavor is even more apparent. It's like eating a cherry, I'm not kidding. That's really good. In fact, I think I prefer that over some of the dried forms, but in terms of the flavor, is it as satisfying to me? Not as much, but I love the crunchiness. And you can see the seeds really come out and shine through on these. Now, what I've been doing well, that's good too. It's really figgy. What I've been doing, and when I mean figgy, is that I mean that it's got that dried fruit flavor, that dried raisin, dried fig, dried date flavor to it. And that's really what I would describe these, these store-bought ones here as. They really have an a awesome figginess to it. But what I've been doing here, guys, with all these figs is that I've been, you know, whenever I'm not eating them, because I've been getting too many, more than I can eat, more than my family can eat. You know, I have less people to feed this year of these things, but, um, you know, whenever I have excess, I put them in a bag and I'll freeze them and I'll, I'm going to make a jam soon. So we'll do a video on that, but uh, you can also put them on pizza and baked goods and different things like that. But another thing like you like you're seeing here is you can just dry them and um, these particular figs we got at the store these are dried whole they're not quartered because what they do is they'll they'll literally just lay them down in a mediterranean dry climate and they'll just you really just take them out after you pick them you just lie them down on you know something that's breathable um, something that is going to keep the bugs away. You can cover them. You know, for those of you guys who are in dried climates, it's really just a simple process. You know, you want to keep them in the shade. Maybe you can, you know, leave them out in the sun for a few days, but um, mostly you kind of want to get that temperature up and then let them dry in a dry environment. If it's going to rain, you have to cover them, um, and obviously they're going to have to be in the shade. But I think most of the time you want to have them out in the sun let them shrivel up naturally. But here's the key, I think, to any good dried fig, and I think that's what this, this particular brand of fig does well, is that they are still moist. 
you don't want to completely dry them to the point where there's no moisture in here. And a lot of growers do that. A lot of commercial dried fig operations do that and I think it ruins the fig. It ruins the dried fig. It's nowhere near as good. This still has a lot of moisture in it. And it's actually very good. Really impressive variety. This is the Calamirna variety. It's very figgy. And that's really all it is. It's a very figgy flavor. It's got tons of seeds in it. Because it's been caprified. Look how many more seeds are in here than compared to another variety, one that I grew. It's almost triple the amount of seeds. So another good um, variety to dry is one that has a lot of seeds in it because it's going to have that crunch. So you should be looking for something with a lot of acnes, a lot of fig flowers that's going to get pollinated. And you also want to have uh, the fruits have a high bricks because if you're going to be drying them outside in the sun, which I think is a better method than drying them in a dehydrator like this, like I have, um, they need to have a higher bricks because you don't want them to ferment. You need to make sure they're dry at all times and you got to keep all those fruit flies off of them or anything really attacking the fruits. And I have noticed, believe it or not, it's very difficult to pick up, but in some of these fruits, I'm tasting a fermentation flavor. So you don't want that. But otherwise, if you live in the right climate, this is not difficult to do. Uh, there's plenty of photos online you can look at. People drying their figs naturally outside in the sun. Personally, I think these figs here are, it's debatable. Are they better than my dried figs? It's really, really close. It's hard to say. Here's a dried pastillier. Let's try some more of them. Wow. That's like eating a gummy bear, guys. That's really good. I'm not sure what variety this is. Let's try it. Mmm. So... I think mine are better. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I think it really does matter when you start up with the right fig. Of course, this is incredible. These dried figs are the best I think I've had um, outside of some select people giving me dried figs that they grew, you know, they grew themselves. So, however, these are incredible. These are like, you know, just amazing sugar bombs. Uh, even still have some of that nice pulp in there and they have a really nice figginess where if some of mine have different and interesting flavors to them that you're just not going to get and you're in buying a dried fig you're not going to get that so maybe you want something different in your fig i don't know but uh these are just really incredible and i know i have a friend that lives in texas and grows his figs in a greenhouse and what he does is he'll dry them um, naturally on his tree in a controlled environment just enough to get some of that water out of them and then he eats them and they're perfect like that and then he'll dry the rest of them and he he gave some to me last year that were just out of this world um, that were even better than this for sure that was a DN Manel that's incredible actually that's a really good dried fig but if you're going to go with dried figs, I personally recommend this brand here. You get it at Costco. I'm not, I'm not uh, promoting them or anything. I'm not, um, I'm not being paid anything by these guys. Um, but uh, I personally believe these are the best. So anyway, at least the best you can buy in the United States. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little quick video on dried figs. We talked a little bit about it. If you want to dry your figs here, it's going to be very difficult. If you guys live in a dry climate like California, or I should say parts of California and, and Arizona, maybe West Texas, uh, you can do this. 
you can dry them naturally on your tree and you can do this outside. I don't know why people don't do this more. Um, and just have a tray, you know, something that's breathable. Again, cover it, um, make sure no rain touches it. Or you can bring them inside and get yourself a $35 Nesco dehydrator. Again, not sponsored by them either, but it's just, it's just so simple. Um, and this thing has so many other uses to it, not just for drying figs, but think about the peppers you can dry, um, tomatoes, all fruits. Bananas go really well in here. Every fruit you can stick in there. Um, but yeah, I think that's really what I wanted to say to you guys on this. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little video on drying them. And uh, yeah, it's just one little thing you guys can do. So, oh, I wanna mention, if you guys wanna dry them here, you're gonna be, uh, it's gonna be very difficult. It's almost impossible. So you have to really pick them and put them in a dehydrator. There's no other way. It's just too high of humidity. You need a lower humidity. Of course, no rain, but the humidity also kills this, right? You wanna have a, a fig that's grown in a very dry environment um, also with a drier soil, you want to dry farm these things. The less water they uptake, the more bricks they have, the higher the bricks they have, the easier they will dry naturally without spoiling. You need to have a high bricks and thinking about bricks when growing these fruits is extremely important. It's just so, so important, especially when doing this. So less water. All right, guys, take care. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See you for tomorrow's video.